All right, guys, it's about time. AQA bio paper three. Let's check out the higher yield topics. Let's see what's going on. So if you're new to this sort of concept and you haven't seen my paper one or paper two videos, so I'm not going to go through things step by step. I'm going to kind of rush through it a little bit. So hopefully you can catch up and work out what's going on. It should be pretty clear. But with that out of the way, let's check out what's going on. Okay, first off, there is no true pattern to the required practicals. Basically, anything can come up. Now, this is very different to chemistry where the actual required practical that you're testing on is the required practical that comes up. Whereas in biology, it's a bunch of synoptic application of required practical knowledge to, to sometimes different practicals, if that makes sense. So there's no real common theme or pattern or, or like frequency of of required practicals but something to keep in mind is that last year in 2023 required practicals six and nine came up okay so what does that mean to me it means that they're most likely not going to come up this year is that the case who knows now i'm going to go through the topics the subtopics the essay the essay topic frequencies and the predictions for 2024 in this video so let's check this out All right first off we've got topics so Obviously, you have the eight different modules or eight different topics, whatever you want to call them, that can come up in paper three, right? There's no split four topic, four topic like you had with paper one and two. We've got the marks here, mark percentage allocation, and that's done. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but you can see control of gene expression is in the lead. And you have energy transfer, cells, organism response, genetic information, organisms exchange substances. And then it drops off a ton with biological molecules and genetics, populations, evolution, and ecosystems. This is a visual representation of the percentage for you guys that like that sort of visual side of things. And you can see it clearly laid out here. Percentage of marks on the y-axis and the topic on the x-axis. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Feel free to take a screenshot. Feel free to take a screenshot and check it out. All right, so these are the topics. It's not that helpful when you look at the topics because there's a lot of detail. There's so much you need to know for biology and that is where you're gonna wanna look at the subtopics, all right? But before we continue, show your boy some love, like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends that are struggling in bio. It really helps me out. So subtopics, let's do this. So I honestly couldn't be asked doing a graph for this because it takes so time like color coding everything. So I just did a table, all right? After this, we'll look at the essays, which I did color code the graph for, but let's look at the subtopics. So, as we can see, even though the overall topic, the control of gene expression, has some minor subtopics in it, the key theme, or the key subtopic, I should say, is 3.8.2 gene expression is controlled by a number of features. By far the highest marks, you know, there's a seven mark difference between this and this, um, in second place being mass transport, third place stimuli, fourth place cell recognition, the immune system, and fifth place nutrient cycles. Okay, the fifth place and the first place is 50% of one another, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Okay, so again, this is historic data. Is this what things are going to look like in 2024? I have no idea, but it's a good idea and a good understanding of the high yield subtopics that come up. We can see the Frequency here, this just tells you how many papers they've come up in and average marks per paper. It's just the total marks across the seven years. By the way, if this wasn't clear, 2017 to 2023, seven paper threes in total I've looked at. Okay, I sort of forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video, but I'm hoping you see my other paper one and two videos. All right, so this should help you again. Take a screenshot, send it to your mates. Hopefully it helps them out. Everything's color coded based on these colors here of these of these overarching topics um, and work your way through it. OK, as we can see, the one that's come up every single year is mass transport. Now, I feel like I'm cursed here by AQA when I say that things have come up every single year. They basically don't come up when I say that. So this one might be jinxed. Uh, I don't know, but we'll see. OK, we'll see. Um, outside of that. Paper three is a lot more patchy than paper two and one. The main reason being is that they can literally ask from such a larger pool of subtopics. Okay, everything in bio. Now this one might, right here, you might be looking at this and be like, what the hell has he done comparing medication and treatment? There were 10 marks across two papers, okay, where I could not allocate it to a specific subtopic, okay? And it was essentially comparing the use of different medications or treatments for different diseases, okay? 
Now, it didn't specifically come under the immunity topic, and it didn't specifically come under the treatment of cancer and those sort of diseases that are actually in the specification. Okay, so I sort of funneled this into its own subtopic, and it's actually excluded from these marks here. So if you added these marks up yourself, I don't think any of you guys are going to be nerdy enough to do that. But if you do, you'll notice that there are 10 marks missing, and these are the 10 marks. All right, cool. So yeah, I'm not going to spend any more time here. Work through this yourself. This is what paper three looks like so far. Let's go on to the essays. All right, so the essays interesting. Okay, so essentially, if you guys look at the mark scheme on the essay, it tells you every single subtopic and micro topic. So I, when I do my analysis, I don't do micro topics. Basically, that's what I refer to it as. So this is as an example, three point six point four, right? is a subtopic and then what you can have with certain subtopics they ju they're just standalone like respiration i believe it's just standalone but then you can have micro topics so i'm going to use 3.6.4 as an example i can't exactly remember if there are micro topics in it but it'll be like 0.1 okay and then it'll be repeat 0 0.2 0 0.3 etc okay and these are the, what i refer to as micro topics so when you look at the mark scheme for the essay, you can see subtopics and you can see microtopics, right? And it will tell you the title of that subtopic or microtopic. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've analyzed every single subtopic and microtopic and I've grouped it back up to the subtopic level, okay? This may be confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. From there, I've looked at how many times was there an instance of that subtopic occurring in the mark scheme for an essay title, right? And that will tell you the raw frequency, okay? Now this 25 here is gonna be a mixture of the subtopic itself and the microtopic if available, okay? Like I said, for example, I don't believe respiration has microtopics. I don't believe photosynthesis has microtopics. It may do, I can't quite remember. I'm pretty sure proteins does have microtopics, like enzymes and, and stuff like that. Okay, so basically from this, what I'm trying to get across to you here is that if you're revising for your essay, you can focus a lot of your time on the higher yield frequencies. Okay, like if you look down here, population, surface area to volume ratio, inorganic ions, stuff like that, it's very low frequency in terms of a topic or a subtopic that is tested and can be utilized within one of the essay questions so far, okay? I don't have a clue what essay is gonna come up this year. It may be a brand new one that utilizes loads of these lower yield ones. Is that high chance? Probably not, okay? So basically, that is what the raw frequency is. How many times did that subtopic appear in the mark scheme? And this is a nice representation of that, okay? Again, this is all color-coded back to these topics right here. Okay, so I don't know if you want to take a screenshot of this, but as we can see, homeostasis, nerve coordination, they're like right in the lead and they have come up every single year. So the paper frequency, again, is exactly the same as this. Okay, this is essentially in how many papers did an essay that utilized this in the essay title come up? Okay, so we can see there's a bunch of sevens. Okay, there's a bunch of sixes and sevens. There's quite a few threes, twos, ones that, you know, didn't come up that much. Okay, so obviously you have to mention a variety of different topics to get full marks in the essay. I think it's five. I honestly can't remember. It's been a hot minute since I did the essay myself. But I think it's five, four or five topics that you have to pull from. And then obviously you get the individual subtopics that you can integrate into that. Okay, so this is, if I saw this table, I would be spending a lot of my revision time. Obviously, you would plan the essay, you'd mind map it, blurt it, and, and plan it in that way. But that is where I'd sort of take some insight from and be like, ah, okay, this has come up in basically every single paper so far. If I revise these and mind map these and blurt these, there's a higher chance that I can apply that knowledge to the essay title in some way. Okay, maybe it won't happen. But there we go. Okay. So this is the essay. Hopefully it helped you out. I really, really hope it helps you out. The essay, a lot of people hate it, um, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Cool. So with that out of the way, let's look at the history and predictions. So this took me an insane, I'm, I repeat, insane amount of time to do, okay? So basically, 
it's a bit of a messy table. I didn't really know how else to neatly present all this data in one go in one table. But basically, I'm going to try and run you through it. Okay, so we have the subtopic here. This is just this column. All right, let's make my pen a bit chunkier. It's looking a bit skinny. Okay, that's still not the best. Let's change the color blue. Blue looks good. All right. So we got the subtopic here, then we've got the years across the top. So 2017, 18, blah, 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 2023, right? And then you've got paper one, two, and three color coded in like yellow, green, and like orange, right? It's like peachy color. All right, so basically, and that just repeats every single year. Now I cannot sit here because if I went through every single subtopic, you know, it'd be like an hour long video and I'm not gonna waste your time or my time doing that. But basically what I want you to think to yourselves is because I haven't actually seen, I'm not a teacher, I haven't seen the paper one and paper two 2024s. But what you can do is you can think back to yourself, okay, in paper one and paper two, which subtopics came up? Okay, and wh more, more specifically, which ones had higher marks for questions, right? So we're talking like eight, 10, 12, 15 plus marks. I don't know which one of those topics came up, but what you can do if I just zoom in, let's zoom in on 2023 for an example, right? And I would actually pay specific attention to paper three, well, one, two, and three, 2023, because that was the last years of exams. And normally there are repeats. So if you look here, there's eight marks in uh, paper two, 2017, 18 in 2018, 12, etc. Because this is such a high yield topic, it basically comes up every year. All right. Now, as we can see, if gene expression, well, I'm pretty sure gene expression this year got like zero marks or something, basically nothing. So what you can see is that even though historically it's come up every single year in paper two, it does also come up the most in paper three. So what that tells me is that considering it didn't come up this year in paper two, it's going to go absolutely crazy in paper three. If they don't have it in paper three whatsoever, I'd be very surprised. Okay, because every year it's received a decent amount of marks, you know, 12 marks collectively, 11 marks, damn, 19 marks, 12 marks, 2018 was another mad one, that is an insane amount of marks. So just think to yourself, guys, try and sit down, take a screenshot of this, I know it is a mad table, try and fit it in there, and you might have to zoom in, scroll in a little bit, but just think to yourself, which subtopic came up in paper one or paper two, the most, um, and just think, what is likely to come up in paper three based on this history, okay? Now, all this is sorted on is from highest total marks across the seven years to lowest, okay? As we can see here, inorganic ions hasn't come up at all as a standalone subtopic. Obviously, they can ask you ion questions related to different subtopics, okay? So that sort of inorganic ion knowledge, sodium, potassium, everything can be applied to other subtopics where ions are present. All right, so this hasn't come up at all. It has come up in the essays, but just keep in mind, this does not include the essays whatsoever. They're kind of a standalone thing. Now, like I said, guys, I'm not gonna sit here and just go through these one by one. It would make the video so long and just suck up so much of your time where you might not be that interested. But my advice to you, if you're looking at this and you're thinking what this subtopic came up a lot or this one normally comes up a lot and it barely came up so far, I would be focusing on those ones. Okay, so if it's a high yield topic, you know, it's come up a lot of the years, a lot of the papers, and it has a high mark allocation on average. So you're looking like here, right? And it hasn't come up or it's only come up a little bit. That's where I'd focus my time for paper three. Okay, outside of these, uh, these right here, that is what I would do myself. Okay, because paper three, they have such a larger pool of subtopics to pull from. I cannot accurately predict what's gonna come up. And I can't say only focus on these, don't focus on these, because they could switch things up on you, okay? So I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible and like, I'm not actually trying to predict anything because paper free is the hardest one to predict. But I really, really hope this sort of aggregated table helps you a lot. I seriously wish you all the best guys, you're nearly there. This week is crazy, okay, four papers back to back. If you do different subjects, maybe even five, um, pretty mental. I don't know who is doing these exam schedules, but it's, it's mad, all right? But best of luck. Until next time, guys, peace.